And now, from the makers of Cold Water Omo... Well, Mr. Watney, you say you're here to investigate the security leakages. Mr. Seligman has asked you if you are here uh, to investigate us. It's just that staring out to sea with binoculars seems rather unnecessary. I happen to be a meteorologist. I should keep a frequent eye on the approaching weather. But surely a place like this must get all the weather reports computerized and in the greatest detail. Binoculars, I mean... It is amazing, young man, what one does not see under one's nose. Mr. Watney, before I make an official report on your visit to your superiors, would you mind telling me... Which one of us do you suspect? You think the leakage is an inside job? Which one of us is the guilty party? Hmm? Have you decided yet? The Avengers. John Steed and Emma Peel, The Avengers. story in which John Seed is still out of action and Emma Peel, with the help of Watney, learns that murder can be all done by mirror. The leakage of information at the Carmatic Research Establishment had been causing Mother grave concern. John Steed, who had set up the security system there, had been placed under close arrest in order to give Mrs. Peel a chance to handle the job. Mrs. Peel had been given the assistance of Watney, a young, up-and-coming agent. Steed, privately, thought that Watney would be more of a hindrance than a help. And so far, let's face it, Steed had been right. Certainly his interrogation of the senior scientist at Carmarrick had merely put their backs up. He'd done nothing to assist Mrs. Peel, who had traced an amateur radio astronomer, Frederick Williams. She'd found his cottage open, entered, and found him dead on the floor. He'd been strangled. Mrs. Peel found a crumpled envelope near the body. She was studying it when the door creaked open very slowly. The large Mongolian, Gozzo, entered silently and swiftly. Mrs. Peel wheeled round. Gozzo came for her, hands outstretched. Frontal brutality! Mrs. Peel kicked out, aiming in just the right place. It was an uneven fight, for Mrs. Peel was about a quarter of a man's size. Together, they made a rare mess of William's cottage. <laughs> Mrs. Peel was getting the worst of it. The Mongolian strength was superhuman. She fought him off with a series of brilliant throws and karate chops. Gosso survived them all. Mrs. Peel appeared to faint. Gosso rushed forward. Mrs. Peel recovered and sidestepped. Gosso crashed out through the French window. Mrs. Peel followed up, tearing after him into the blazing sunlight. They grappled again. This time, Mrs. Peel had the advantage. She did a dazzling drop kick, which hurtled Gozzo backwards against a wheelbarrow filled with gardening tools. It was perhaps fortunate for her, and certainly unfortunate for Gozzo, that the thighs had its blade upturned. <laughs> Mrs. Peel mopped her forehead. So long, Goliath. Well, young man, you've heard what Major Sparshot said. Which of us do you think is guilty? Well, I, I, I'm not making any accusations, Dr. Seligman. I, I'm only trying to do my job. There has to be someone in this laboratory, doesn't it? There's Chittiman over there, Sparshot, Carswell, and me. The secrets that are supposed to have leaked out must have come from this room. Therefore, it's someone in this room who's guilty. Uh, well, we I, have uh... this specific knowledge, but the Major here sits in on every conference. It must be one of us. All I can say is that the security here is as tight as a drum. No one can bug the place. Well, I'm inclined to think that there is no possibility of any outside influence. Uh, I'm going to tell you that you're going to blame me. What? Oh, Mrs. Pugh, goodness gracious. What on earth has happened to you? A very large man attacked me. What? 
Particular way? Which, which way did he go? And Mrs. Peel gave a thumbs down sign. He went that way. He's dead. What? You... You mean you? It was accidental. But quite necessary. Uh, when did this happen, Mrs. Peel? In a house owned by Mr. Williams. He's dead, too. I'll get some men to check the place. Please. There might be something I've forgotten. Oh, Dr. Seligman, does this mean anything to you? Mrs. Peel withdrew from her pocket the crumpled envelope she'd picked up from beside Frederick Williams' body. Seligman looked at the figures on the back. Mm. It is a fairly simple equation. You want me to work it out? Could you? A computer can do it in seconds. It looks like some calculation on the refraction of light beams. Yes, that's what it is. There you are. Not that the answer means anything unless you know the question. <laughs> that is science for you. Yes, yes, indeed it oh, is. Mrs. Peel, I'm most upset. I, I mean, all this trouble and I wasn't there. Well, you should consider yourself lucky, Watney. Excuse me. Mrs. Peel moved off to clean herself up a bit. Dr. Seligman sidled over to Watney. Mr. Watney, I'd like to talk to you. Oh, why, certainly. Uh, what do you wish to do? No, 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 not here. Not in front of the others. I don't trust anyone here anymore. There are some woods beyond the establishment. I'll leave now. Follow and meet me there in ten minutes. I think it's very important. I think I know how the security leaks have come about. Ten minutes. Agreed? And so, ten minutes or so later, Watney made an excuse to leave the Carmelic Research Center. Dr. Seligman was already past the guards and into the woods. In a clearing, he stopped and looked about him at the sunlight filtering through the branches and the leaves. He paused to light a pipe, a thoughtful frown on his face. Watney, with usual bad judgment, had chosen to enter the wood by the other pathway. But Major Sparshot had not been so deceived. He was also in the wood. Dr. Seligman puffed at his pipe and waited. And then, Dr. Dr. Seligman. What's that? Over, Over here. here. I, I must, must see you. you. Who's, who's calling me? Where are you? Over, Over here, here, Dr. Dr. Seligman. This, this way. This, this way, way, Dr. Seligman. Over, Over here. here. Seligman followed the direction of the voice. Then he noticed a bright light glinting on a tree trunk. He walked towards it. It was a piece of ordinary mirror. Seligman stopped and gazed at his own reflection. Then there was a flare of light into the mirror. Seligman, partially blinded, stepped backwards. I was right. My theory was right. That I right, right, Dr. Dr. Seligman. And, and so... <laughs> Watney heard the shot. It told him he was not on the right track. He broke into a run along the path, brushing aside branches, crashing through the undergrowth. He found Dr. Seligman lying by some bushes. Hurriedly, he knelt and cradled the dying man in his arms. Oh, Anthony, I, I know. I know how to... Don't talk. Take it easy. It's no good. No good, Anthony. I know how they do it. <coughs> mirrors. All done with mirrors. Uh... Watney looked up from Seligman's dead body to the shattered mirror which still hung on the tree trunk. He moved to examine a portion of the glass still stuck to the frame. Watney was about to reach out and touch it when a flare of light caught the segment. Watney blinked and then heard it. <laughs> what the devil? Stay where you are. Don't move. Major Sparshot emerged from the bushes, gun at the ready. Watney moved forward, taking the Major by surprise. He reached out and jerked the Major's gun from his hand. He sniffed it and broke it open. Hmm. Seems all right. Uh, well, you surely don't take it that I... I've been, been trained to question everything, Major Sparshot. Uh, so have I. And I'd be very interested to know just what you and Dr. Seligman were doing leaving the building to snoop around in these woods. Mm-hmm. It was the doctor's idea. He approached me back there in the laboratory. He said he wanted to speak to me alone, that he didn't trust anyone in the building. What? It's true. He felt we could talk more freely out here. I followed him down here. I was on the other side of the clearing when I heard the shot. I came across. He died as I stooped over him. Uh, Did he uh, say anything before he died? No. No, he didn't say anything. Very strange. I heard someone calling to him from another part of the wood. A voice 
echoing through the trees, calling his name. Did you hear anything? No, no, I didn't. Then there was laughter, a man's laughter. Oh, there couldn't have been anyone hiding near here. No, I would have seen them. It seemed to come from the edge there, the opening. Come on. Yes. The clearing that overlooks the sea. Well, there can be nothing to be gained from this. Neither sheer drop down to the rocks below. Mm. Nothing at all. Just a view of the lighthouse on the peak. <sighs> Mystery. But there was someone here. I heard them. Hey, do you often hear voices, Watney? Young Watney was aware that things hadn't gone off to a very good start. Mrs. Peel had been attacked, Frederick Williams had been strangled, and now Dr. Seligman, one of Carmatic's top scientists, had been shot. The Mrs. Peel wasn't very impressed either. And he didn't say anything before he died? Yes, yes he did. And I didn't think it wise to tell Sparsha. He muddled things up, sir. The Seligman said, I know how they did it. It's all done by mirrors. All done by mirrors? Hmm. Mrs. Peel looked out of the high windows and down at the crumpled envelope with the calculations scrawled across it. Then she noticed on the other side of the envelope a small outline drawing of a lighthouse. Looking up again, she gazed straight out to the peak upon which was a lighthouse. All done by mirrors. Hmm. I think I know what my next port of call will be. Listen every evening, Monday to Friday, to John Steed and Emma Peel, The Avengers. Brought to you by the makers of Cold Water Omen. The Avengers. Donald Monat as John Steed and Diane Appleby as Emma Peel is adapted and directed by Dennis Falbig and produced by David Gooden. <laughs>